So for people who are normies like me, and may, I doubt there's many that don't know what 3i Atlas is, but can you explain just basic, give us a basic, basic rundown of, of what exactly it is and how you discovered it? And why is it called 3i Atlas? It's, I didn't discover it. Um, I just paid attention to it. Okay. Um, so 3i Atlas is the third interstellar object. So that's why you have 3i. Atlas is the name of the telescope in Chile that discovered it, only half a meter in size. Um, every day now, when uh, you know, I write on medium.com and uh, uh, reports about 3i Atlas, and every day you can see images of 3i Atlas taken by half meter telescopes that are owned by amateurs. You know, with uh, at a cost of I don't know thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. Compare that to the instruments used by NASA that cost altogether billions of dollars. Nevertheless, the information in those images taken by amateurs now is much greater than in the NASA images at the press conference that we heard about. But 3i Atlas uh, was discovered on July 1st, and it was very bright. And uh, July 1st is just three days before the July 4th holiday. Mm -hmm. That's important because my wife wanted to go on a vacation and uh, I immediately realized this object is bright. You know, it's uh, the fact that the half a meter telescope saw it at a distance of four and a half times the Earth-Sun separation means that it's a very bright, a very big object. And I calculated that if it's, uh, you know, the brightness of this object uh, is uh, as a result of reflection, reflection of sunlight from a solid body, it has to be 20 kilometers in diameter, which is the size of Manhattan Island, you know, the length. Uh, that's a huge object. That's uh, you know comparable to the size of the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. These are extremely rare things. So then, during, as we got to the uh, to, to the vacation place, I immediately did a calculation and argued that there is not enough rocky material in interstellar space to deliver such a big package mm. over the past decade because this survey went only for one decade. And you would expect it once per 10,000 years. Now, you might say, oh, well, maybe, you know, it's a, a, a rare object that happens to come by. Uh, that, that's obviously possible, but at a probability of uh, 0.1% 0. 0 or so, or less. Uh, and then, uh, so that was the first anomaly that struck me, you know. Uh, the size. The, the mass. So it's a, a million times more massive than the first interstellar object discovered in 2017 called Oumuamua. Mm -hmm. That was the size of a football field. So compare the size of a city to the size of a football field. That's the difference in size. And the mass goes like size cubed. And how do we, how do we determine that mass again? What is the calculation there? Oh, it's just the, you take the size, the diameter, let's say, and uh, cube it, multiply by the typical density of a solid, and you get the mass. And in both cases, and you, irrespective, I mean, if you use the same density for both objects, which is solid density, about one gram per cubic centimeter, you get a large size of all the five kilometers or bigger uh, for three atlas. So it's at least a thousand times more massive than the second interstellar object called the Borisov, which was found back in 2019, mm -hmm. and uh, a million times more massive than uh, Oumuamua, which was found in 2017. So that's by itself, it's an anomaly. Why? Because I wrote in my paper, I said, uh, you know, either the object itself is much smaller than we think, maybe there is a very dense plume of gas ar uh, and dust around it that reflects sunlight and the object itself, the nucleus is much smaller. Mm -hmm. That would be then, uh, that would uh, relieve the tension of, in terms of uh, the size or the mass. Um, and the second uh, possibility is that if it's so big, maybe it targeted the inner solar system. It was not drawn from the reservoir of rocks in interstellar space. And this was my last sentence. Maybe it targeted the inner solar system. The editor of the journal, and that was just uh, a few days after the, the object was discovered, the editor said, um, I will publish this, this paper only if you remove this last sentence. Um, they, they said that they would not publish it unless you removed the last sentence. Yes. Basically, you shouldn't say that it was targeting the solar system as a possibility. It's definitely a comet, according to the editor. And that was just the early days. We didn't have much data at that time. Um, just to show you how science operates these days. So I said, okay, well, I want it to be published. So 
uh, I, I took out that sentence and then the rebel that I am, I wrote a full paper on the technological option. And uh, in that paper, we, in collaboration with two other authors, that was peer reviewed and published just to show you that this editor was out of line because this paper was eventually published, peer reviewed. Um, and we show that also, you know, the, the fact that it was targeting the, the inner solar system is supported by the trajectory, which is aligned with the plane of the planets right. within five degrees. And the chance of that happening at random, if you consider all incoming orbits, uh, only one in 500 will be a, so, so aligned with the planets. And, one you know, in 500. Yeah, maybe. and this is the third object. So, you know, again. We've, we've only been monitoring these interstellar objects for how long? Uh, about eight years. About eight years. Yeah. Okay. So since about roughly 2017. Yeah. 2017 is when the first one was uh, discovered by the telescope in Hawaii that uh, mm -hmm. was looking Omo, for- Omo, right? Yeah, Omoomo, uh, which means a scout in the Hawaiian language. And that one um, was just found. It was flagged because it came near Earth. And this uh, survey telescope was- trying to find near-Earth objects that pose a threat because Congress tasked NASA to find 90% of all objects bigger than a football field. And uh, this survey telescope was constructed to find near-Earth objects. Then it found a move more, but realized that it's moving too fast to be bound by gravity to the sun. And so that's how interstellar objects are flagged. You see an object moving too fast to be bound by gravity to the sun, and therefore it must have arrived from outside the solar system. Oh. So they discovered it by complete coincidence. Then a couple of years later, I found together with uh, my student, uh, Amir Siraj, we found uh, a meteor. Uh, in, in other words, an object that collided with Earth, half a meter in size, in a catalog uh, of uh, fireballs that, uh, again, NASA compiled uh, based on uh, US government satellites that monitor the Earth all the time for uh, nuclear uh, ballistic missiles, you know. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, we know that the, a lot of ballistic missiles were launched from Iran, you know, uh, last year. And so there is th there is a network of uh, uh, infrared sensors looking at the Earth uh, for flashes of heat. Satellites and stuff. Yeah, satellites. And those existed uh, back in 2014. And they noticed the fireball from an object colliding with Earth, so that was definitely not, uh, should not be classified. So they released it to the scientific community and said, here is a meteor and documented the, the speed by which it was moving. And all we did was look at that speed and realize, well, it was moving at 60 kilometers per second relative to the sun outside the solar system. If we go back in time, this object was moving as fast as 3 i Atlas. And so we said, it's an interstellar meteor. That's it. And then the paper was not accepted for publication because the referee, the reviewer said, we don't believe the US government data. So at the time I was- um, Who said they don't believe the US government data? The reviewer of the paper. In so, an so, so, so someone, sitting, someone sitting in a university somewhere? Yeah, Okay. exactly. <laughs>